All right, so here we are on the final setups of Myth TV, and we went ahead and did the install in the last section. Go ahead and after the install, reboot the box, and you'll actually be welcomed with, as soon as you restart, it'll ask you if you want to go through the setup right now or if you want to do it later. Uh, so this whole process is going to show you how to run the setup, and to do it, I'm not going to use my camera. I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going remote. This is a remote session with my Myth TV box as well as a terminal here. And so if the backend doesn't come up, go ahead and just type in mythtv-setup. And that's going to go ahead and start the setup process. It's going to ask you if you need to close the, myth, the backend first. So go ahead and hit OK on that. And then it's going to go ahead and pop up the setup section. And on here you have a couple of sections that you need to set up. Uh, first of all, we're going to go ahead and... oh. Well, yeah. First of all, we're going to go ahead and go through the general setup stuff. This is uh, information about the box, where the back end is located, uh, that kind of stuff. By default, the IP addresses are going to be 127.001, which is your loopback address, and that works just fine. If you're going to be using a secondary front end, I recommend changing this to the IP address because this will show you that anything can connect to it. If you can connect to it on the actual public IP address, then anything else can connect to it. I wouldn't mess around with too much else with ports or status ports or anything. Uh, you'll want to set up your TV format. There's helpful information along the bottom just sh saying stuff about it. Um, if you have an antenna, use the broadcast, that kind of stuff. Uh, we're going to go through, I think most of this is going to be set to default right now. I usually leave my, gener my general settings mostly default. Uh, delete files slowly. I don't remember if that was default or not, but that makes them, well, your hard drives not freak out if you want to delete a program. It kind of just slowly deletes the files and doesn't have to delete everything at once, especially if you're watching TV. It gets annoying. Uh, so this is for uh, program information if you want to scan for it over the air. If you have other front ends, if you let's say you have a front end on your TV and your back end is in a closet somewhere and sometimes the back end goes to sleep or you have it turn off if it's idle this can actually wake up the back end uh, whenever you're trying to watch TV you would just say okay I want to go ahead and watch TV now and if the back ends off it'll start it up for you uh, same thing here this is some more uh, if you also want to wake up slaves you can do it from here commands for killing the back end the maximum sim simultaneous jobs, I would recommend starting at one and working your way up because even I have a Core 2 Duo at, I think it's like a 3.0 or 3.6. If I'm trying to watch HD and flag commercials and transcode or something like that, it definitely is noticeable. So I would recommend leaving this at one as well as your CPU usage. Leave it at low at first and then this will kind of work its way up. If you want to, if it's a really slow machine, which I've used in the past, go ahead and set the time here and so that it only will do it between, let's say, midnight and six in the morning, probably when you're not watching TV. This will make it so that all your recordings that happened overnight would be flagged during this time, but it's not going to give you, if you're recording a show at four, you can't watch it at like six and already have the commercial stripped out of it. So it's a plus and minus. If you start having it really slow, you can do that though, as well as change your CPU amount. And then we're going to go ahead and allow the commercial detection jobs and also transcoding jobs. And then there's some custom jobs along the right side here. Uh, we can designate those a little later. For the commercial flags, uh, the start... Um, start commercial flagging jobs when the recording starts. This allows it to actually flag as it's recording and depending on your CPU and your computer your commercial flagging is actually going to be really close to real time. Uh, mine actually is just over real time even using low CPU threads. So if I'm watching a show or if I record a show and wait 15 minutes for an hour show or something like that most of the commercials are already going to be stripped out by the time I get to watch it. And you can also set stuff for the uh, transcoding here. Here's your user jobs. If you want to set user jobs such as, I don't know, uh, copy recording to device. And then you would set uh, like copy dash blah blah blah. Something here. Uh, you can set those up and then also it's available in the front end whenever you're doing something. You can just say, oh yeah, copy that over to my network storage or copy it to my media player or something like that. And you can run these jobs. And you can even set these jobs to 
to run after a video has been transcoded or something. Uh, this is if you have Windows Media Player. Uh, it has a UPnP server which Windows Media Player will try to connect to. You can either set it to allow it to see recordings or watch your videos. I have mine set to recordings because I sometimes will watch my recordings through my PS3. My PS3 will just grab this information and I can just watch whatever's been recorded. And it actually is a little more consistent than Myth TV sometimes. So if I'm having problems with it or if it's doing a lot on the back end, I'll just watch it through the PS3 and stream it. On to capture cards. I'm not going to delete all my capture cards because I've done that too many times now and so I'm just going to walk you through what I've done for my capture cards. I have uh, five, well, sort of five tuners. I have three physical devices. Uh, my first one is, oh, and when you're setting up your tuners, the priority here in the order you set them up, I believe is the priority it takes when watching live TV. You can't set a priority anywhere for live TV and so that just goes by when you set up, set up the device at which time. Recordings you can set priority later so don't worry about priority for a recording but for me I want my HD PVR to be my first live TV device and so if I go into here it's set as a H.264 encoder card, HD PVR and I select my video devices video zero that just is what it was. It automatically got that for me and so I don't need to change anything else here. Uh, my input is component and my audio is actually my optical audio so I'm gonna go ahead and set that to optical. You have a couple options if you have S-Video composite um, but for the most part if you're doing HD it's gonna be component and you're gonna want the probably the full surround sound. Next up is my HD home run. This one is uh, sitting actually it's plugged directly into my computer into a secondary NIC and so it has a funky 169 address but I just left most of it the same available devices is one or zero you can see I already have it set up so it warns me that it's already in use and recording options on HD home run you can actually set it to do max recordings of two because in myth TV point zero point two two it now allows for simultaneous recordings if it's on the same uh, multiplex. So typically for me Time Warner Cable has a couple different uh, channels that will have like maybe three channels at a time so if I want two, four, seven I can record both of those with the same with just using one tuner. I could actually, re yeah. And so you can set this to higher. I would recommend setting it to two. If you have problems go back down to one. Uh, we're gonna finish that guy. My second HD home run is very is exactly the same. I think I need to change this to allow two as well. Uh, but everything else is just exactly the same. I also have a HodgePodge HVR 1600 and that's these two devices here. It actually has three tuners on it. It has an analog, a digital, and a radio. I don't have the radio set up but let's start here with the analog which in my case is a there's a whole walkthrough on the Myth TV wiki. You'll want to read that because you do have to compile some drivers uh, at least with the kernel I'm using. Um, and so if it's something else you can use, uh, here's the MPEG recorder and this shows a lot more information about it. Do not use analog for the HVR 1600, there's a problem with it right now. For me, I'm going to go ahead and use the IVTV driver and my tuner is 1. It has some other inputs but I'm just going to leave it on tuner 1 and then finish that guy and my digital tuner on it is the DVB which is digital video broadcast um, which is the standard they use a lot of places in the United States they use a different standard but it, you can still call it DVB this information all was received automatically you, this is for satellite information the DISEQC and recording options you will want to make sure that this one is set to max recordings of one because this one does not support uh, multi Plex recordings and I also would recommend changing the use DVB card for active ETA, EIT scan unless you're using over the air. If you're using over the air leave this on if you have an antenna but if you have cable uh, you're probably getting all your information from uh, schedules direct or s from some other XML grabber so we'll go over that in a little bit. I'll finish there, finish that guy my tuners are all set up, all five tuners ready to go. Um, that's pretty much all it is for that.